Welcome back to yet another edition of The Viewpoint. I am Saja Brito. Well, for the first time on QTV, and of course for the first time on The Viewpoint, please welcome to the show um, one-time Secretary General and uh, Budget Director, author, trained economist. Welcome to the show, Mr. Momodo Sabali. Thank you, Saja. Thanks for having me. How do you reflect on your days as um, SG and Budget Director? Well, I reflect uh, back on those days with uh, a great sense of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having availed me such a fantastic opportunity at such a critical time in the evolution of our beloved country, the Gambia. Uh, they were challenging times. Uh, I think uh, I've done a lot of work. I've done youth work as a central banker for 10 years before I became budget director. But I think uh, the job of a project director was about the most critical job I've ever done at that point. Uh, it could only be dwarfed by the assignment that followed, which was being Secretary General, Minister of Presidential Affairs and Minister of the Civil Service under Yaya Jame, because that's the most difficult job that anybody can do anywhere in the world. How was it like working for Jame? Well, it was uh, really interesting, exciting and challenging. Uh, interesting in that Jama is a very interesting human being, very smart. I keep saying that even though some people don't like it, I think Jama is a very intelligent human being, one of the most intelligent uh, human beings I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, he's uh, challenging also because he's always trying to raise the bar. Uh, he can be difficult to do, to do work with at times because uh, sometimes he takes decisions which uh, you as his lieutenant may not agree with him and uh, trying to argue with Jame of course has its risks and pitfalls and uh, is a great debater, is uh, opinionated of course, he, he believes in what he believes in. So that's the challenging part, you know, uh, having to work with him as your boss on issues that you may not necessarily agree with him. Interesting. You cannot be president more than the president himself. Yes. And you cannot be Muslim. Mm -hmm. more than the prophet, the holy prophet, peace be upon him. Alayhi salam. A statement that he said on yes. the night of your firing. Yeah, uh, it was actually not the night of my firing. Okay. Uh, I, I think I was relieved of my position as Secretary General Minister of Presidential Affairs and redeployed as Minister of uh, Higher Education. education. Okay. And uh, during the swearing-in ceremony, he made that statement and uh, everybody knew he was uh, talking about, about me. You. And I actually watched it on TV. But there is one thing. There is no way uh, Jame would look at me in the eye and say that. Why? Yaram Akome. He's never raised his voice against me. And I know he used to insult ministers who were old enough to be my parents. Why well, Jame never raised his voice against me. So that day I was supposed to be in cabinet. I was at state house. I was in the, in the VIP waiting room. He sent the protocol, chief of protocol to ask me to go. I don't have to be there. And then he went into the cabinet room to swear in my then successor, my short-lived successor, because I don't think he spent more than 10 days there, Abdullah Salah, and during the swearing, he made that statement. And I was sitting down in my living room in Kelsenia, I looked at him, I laughed. I said, <laughs> it's very funny that he's making this statement in my absence. Yes. But it was a mixture of uh, love, respect, and fear that Jame had of me. All these three, three things combined. After everything, you think he fears you? He, he did. I mean, <laughs> that's a statement of capitulation. For a president who's ruled a country for some 20, 20 years at the time or so, you talking about somebody who was uh, barely 40 years and you're saying, how can we be more presidential than the president himself? That's a statement of capitulation. You are very so controversial. I'm and not. You are. I'm not. And then you have an opinion. You're actually a sounding controversial thing. now. I am oh, not. Am I? Okay. I'm not I just speak the truth. You, you, okay. Yes. That is just the pen being himself. Yes. And being true to himself. Exactly. You petitioned the TRRC. Yes. And uh, you asked Dr. Jalo to resign um, Alajibaro's appointment. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it was quite a dramatic jump, actually, from oh, a question dramatic, about being presidential affairs to a petition on the TRRC. Mm -hmm. It comes within a framework of a transition period that's supposed to be marked by a transitional justice project and process. Uh, the former regime was accused a lot of things, especially in matters of uh, judicial issues, uh, justice, rule of law, human rights. A lot of accusations have been leveled against the past government. So if we have a new dispensation that is supposed to correct 
the errors of the past. Uh, it would be the height of injustice, of incompetence, of uh, injustice at every level for those errors about which the former regime was uh, criticized to be repeated. We are supposed to have a transitional justice project. You are supposed to establish a truth, reconciliation, and reparations Reparation. commission of which there are divergent opinions actually because some people don't believe that Gambia should have a truth commission because we've never gone through ethnic cleansing. There was no outright war here. Yes, there were uh, flagrant abuses of human rights, but some people believe that we didn't go to a level where we would need a truth and reconciliation commission. Do you if, think if, this if, is going to be another witch hunting project or something? Well, I don't want to get to that. What I'm saying is to try to answer your question. You want to do a truth and reconciliation commission, fine. You're going through that. Now you appointed a, an executive secretary of your Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Baba Gale Jalo, who is himself conflicted because he's an alleged victim of the past regime. His newspaper, then maybe we are too young to even know those things. I mean, maybe that's why a lot of people don't agree. Oh, I didn't know about agree. that. Yeah, he, Baba Gale was running a newspaper here called The Independent, a very critical newspaper I know. that was allegedly firebombed by agents of the state. And Baba Gale, of course, later, he went into exile for years. So this guy is a victim. You cannot take a victim and appoint him to be in charge of a process that's supposed to bring us truth and reconciliation. So whilst that's on, the appointment of Baba Gale Jalo itself is problematic. We're sitting down looking at this, and then the same Baba Gale Jalo, who is conflicted, who is a victim, goes ahead and appoints his friend Alaji Baro, who is also, some people call him a victim, of the past regime. I call him a villain because he, he and his colleagues took guns and tried to uh, use force to overthrow a democratically elected government, mm. uh, a process that uh, involved some violence and led to the loss of Gambian lives, which is uh, really regrettable. So for that kind of person who took up arms against the past regime and actually attacked that government, and this person was uh, arrested, tried in a US federal court and sentenced for that person to be appointed as director of investigation and research in the proposed Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I think this is unacceptable in any civilized society. You think he should resign? Well, he, he should not have been appointed in the first place. Okay. I don't think he's the kind of person who would, uh, who would have that kind of mind to resign. But the appointment should be rescinded, and that's why I petitioned the executive secretary of the TRRC, Baba Gale Jalo. Unfortunately, I've still not gotten a response from him. Uh, and it's almost two weeks now. I, I petitioned Baba Gale Jalo, the TRRC executive secretary, sent a copy to the solicitor general and legal secretary of the uh, Ministry of Justice. I sent a copy to the secretary general and head of the civil service. I personally delivered it at State House. And I sent a copy to the Gambia Bab Association. And this is my premise. If you want truth and reconciliation, you cannot have somebody as conflicted as Alaji Baro coming to be head of the research and investigation process. And this research and investigation process is going to be about people who partly were accused of human li rights violations. And these people, some of them, were serving in, uh, in our security forces. And some of these alleged uh, villains were definitely part of the security forces that foiled their illegal and unconstitutional uh, December, December attack against the democratically elected government. Some Gambians Gambia. think that um, the TRRC is just another waste of, is going to be another waste of taxpayers' money. What do you think from it's your personal point of view? It's not supposed to be. But from the evidence we are seeing, they are bad decisions. You know, they are definitely uh, controversial decisions. The bias they are showing, the I don't care attitude they are showing, I don't care because I petitioned Baba Gale Jalo. What he said in the media is, We'll only respond to Sabali if we think it's necessary to, to, to respond to him. Only if he might tell her. He's a friend like them. Call appoint. In a civil, democratic manner, you, you're bringing that kind of attitude. If this process goes on, it definitely is going to be a waste of resources. So you didn't spare Kirfato while you were at it. You took a dig at them, saying that how much are they being paid for them to keep this story or for them defending this um, criminal appointments, you call it. <laughs> Who do you spare? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you what you said. <laughs> yeah, care for what happened. And I think the media, the media in this country needs to be watched. We're seeing a, a lot of self-censorship, a lot of outright bias, which is very unfortunate. 
because the media was one of the biggest whiners of the past regime. We are being censored. That's why we cannot do our job. Now, as far as we know, this government have not seen any outright attempts to censor media apart from a few incidents like how they censored us, uh, our, our GIS GIS platform on GRTS. Uh, other than that, I've not seen a, a, any outright desire by this government to clamp down on the media. But this uh, issue about Alaji Baro's appointment, I was the one who raised it on Facebook. And people started uh, criticizing me, debating against me. Ker Fatu never shared any post I did. But they decided to share uh, the, the counter views. So I thought this is just outright bias partiality. So I took a hit at them. I said, how much are they paying them for trying to, for justifying their criminal appointment. I so said. what's good between you and Madi Jabate? Because there's been a lot of name calling as far as this mm -hmm. TRRC saga is concerned. Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of personal vendetta between the two of you or what? I don't have any personal thing against Madi, but I think uh, what he did was we, uh, of course I started this debate on uh, Alaji Baro, and uh, true to his uh, on calf on, 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 on cultured ethos, Madi decided to attack me and insult me personally for raising this issue. So uh, I thought that was uh, uncalled for, and I, I did a post against him. You know, uh, I use certain words. I don't want to use it um, on your platform. Uh, some of my followers told me, now I don't think you should use this kind of words. I pull it down. But I get uh, counter suggestions from some of my followers all over the world that Madi has been doing this, attacking everybody, insulting everybody, and he thinks he can get away with it. Uh, some people suggested I should respond. I thought that was right. So I did a whole piece on him. I, I, he I did say something mm -hmm. about um, your appointment as SG and mm -hmm. some sort of appointments that he mentioned mm -hmm. that they were unconstitutional. So who he questioned that who are you mm -hmm. to question Alaji Barrow's appointment? Well, uh, I don't think I've had any un unconstitutional appointment. But what Madi did was he insulted me. And so I, I took him to task. I did a whole, a, whole, a whole piece on him that's published by Freedom Newspaper. And I actually published it on my public figure page on, on Facebook too. So I called him the hypocrite that he is because Mari Jobate was recently saying that he would not sit down on any platform that Mumudu Sabal is invited to. And when he made the claim, I know it's impossible because <laughs> Mumudu Sabal is everywhere. You can't avoid me. So a group of young people, uh, there's this youth group called the Leadership Clinic. They invited Mari, me, and Amigo Jong Sisoho on a platform, a symposium. And Mari said he would not come because I'm there. But a couple of weeks later, the same Madi Jobate was invited to another forum. It was a national budget discussion platform run by Bay Kanyang uh, uh, Human Rights Group. And Madi came. When he met me there, I thought this guy, you know, because he's supposed to be a principal person, he would run away. He didn't. He sat down there. But you guess why? Because when the youth called us, there was no money. These youths are just struggling. But the Bay Kanyang platform, they were paying each of us 5000 So what kind of principle does Madi has? And Madi Jobate was here during the IGMS time. He worked on the Jamis government. He worked at the GRA. Nobody heard Madi. Madi only started openly criticizing Yaya Jame towards the end of the Jamis days when he was in, in Europe trying to get an asylum. Very hypocritical. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, you in don't have to be sure. <laughs> I'm not sure about you that. You can decide to be afraid. Okay. It's okay. What was the deal between you and DA Jawatu? He did oh. say that your, your, your views <laughs> in the new Gambia are polluting the public space. Uh, DA. He thought that your level of education and sophistication, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. your level of education and sophistication, mm -hmm. I mean, you would have passed the level of looking at the wall with black and white lenses. Yeah, uh, that kind of uh, attempt uh, is what I call caging. And I'm sure you know my hashtag, can't cage me. Yes, I you do. know, Gambians will do all s uh, make all sorts of attempts to shut you down. They don't want people to talk in New Gambia. That's the problem. And the problem is those people who don't want us to talk were the loudest critics of the former regime. But you know, it's good, it's easy to be at the giving end of criticism, but how difficult it is to be at the receiving end. And I think that's what people like Baba Gale Jalo are realizing now. To ever many Kaneg Limon Lusaf, you do Galkosa gaming, it's not easy. So DA Jao, uh, and I must say, I have a lot of respect for DA Jao, regardless of what he says about me. I think he's a good Gambian, he's a patriot, I think he's independent minded. But DA, what happened is he disagreed with my views. Uh, I spoke against Gambia's re entry into the Commonwealth, I'm against it. I spoke against uh, the government's attempts to, 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 bend, to, to, to bend down to Western pressure about homosexuality because I believe that Gambia should never legalize or accept homosexuality in our country because we are a cultured religious people. We should never accept it. Regardless of how many billions the EU is giving us, we should never accept it. So those are the views I raised and uh, DA didn't like it. So he's trying to kind of play a psychological game. How, how, how can you think like this? 
Paco, man, they pass a level yo yo. Man, he said, I'm sophisticated. Yes, I'm too sophisticated for a cheap argument like that from DA to make me to, 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 to cower down and accept some of the policies they, they're throwing about. Well, having said that, I have a lot of respect for him, unlike the other person we are talking about. DA is a very civilized human being. Uh, he, he, he engaged me in a, deb a debate in a very cultured, civilized way. Enough respect to him, man. I don't agree with him, but I have the highest respect for him. That's interesting. You yeah. have an issue with uh, the, the Gambia's re-entry into the Commonwealth. Yes. Tell us why. Yeah, because, I mean, the, the Commonwealth, by the way, I always say this, when uh, Jame took the decision to pull us out of the Commonwealth, our Secretary General uh, actually drafted Probably the press one of the people that made the decision? No, 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 no. You know, uh, people always say this, you know, I wish I could take credit for some of these things, but to be honest, I cannot. This was a uh, Jame's personal decision. It wasn't even discussed at Cabinet. That was Jame the man doing what he wanted to do, how he wanted to do it, when he wanted to do it. That's what he did. But I think it was a good decision. So for the Gambia to re-enter into the Commonwealth with so much eagerness, with so much of a rush, I mean, it, it really disturbed me. At least play some diplomatic game. Don't show this tubab that you are so eager to be back part of their ex-colonized countries, club men. We have difficult issues going around in the country. These tubabs are trying to deport our people. And I know the British is very important for them to have Gambia back into the Commonwealth. So I thought at least our government could have negotiated, delayed this, you know, even if they wanted, they could have pretended and maybe pushed the immigration issue. You want to deport our people. Can you reconsider this? Can you delay their stay? Can you give them uh, exemptions? And at the time, I thought the tubabs were willing to do a lot for the Gambia. But we gave that away so cheaply, it, it really upset me. The cabinet reshuffle. Yes. I saw a post that you made. You said, all former Jami employees mm -hmm. are equal, mm -hmm. but some are more equal. It was not about the cabinet reshuffle. That, that post actually happened months before the cabinet Before, before that. Uh, by the but way, I, way I, I never publicly com commented about the, on the, on the cabinet, cabinet reshuffle. reshuffle. But yeah. when you said, okay, let's just, uh, that was yes. the animal farm thing that we are trying to yes. invoke. Mm -hmm. All Jami employees are equal, mm -hmm. but some are more equal than the others. Yeah, I said that. Okay. No, because what happened was... Um, when the new government came, there, were, there was a lot of rhetoric, like those who were working for Jame are bad people, we are not going to employ them. Somebody actually made a public promise that he has enough people in the struggle and the those who supported him, you know, I, I've chosen not to speak, uh, to mention him. I stick to that. You can mention him if you want to. They said they had enough supporters in the struggle and those who voted for them, they don't need people who work with Jame. Hey, all of a sudden, broad daylight, new gives new jail guy, don't legal yali yali yali. But the way it happened was, it's like some people who worked with Jame were good enough to work to be appointed in this government, but others are not. I thought that was not fair. So one day I made a post. I said all former Jame employees are equal, but some are more equal than others. Hashtag Animal Farm. I said it. Interesting. You are an economist, a trained economist. Yes. What's your overview regarding the, the Gambian economy? Well, I, I think uh, we are still struggling, but um, to be fair to the government, I don't think they're doing too badly. Uh, I'm an economist. That's what I've done most of my adult life. I started work at the Central Bank in 1999 as an economist, uh, trained all over the world. Uh, and my job for 10 years was uh, uh, compiling and analyzing macroeconomic data. It, it's not easy to run a third world economy, especially if you have the strings of the IMF and the World Bank and other multinational institutions are around you. I, I always, when it comes to economics, um, I, I, I'm not very hard on the government because um, I was budget director particularly. And it was actually when I became budget director that I realized how difficult it is to transform the economy of a third world country. Even countries like Nigeria are, are struggling. So I, I always look at it also with the backdrop of the impasse, what had happened, people thought there was going to be war. And I was thinking of the economic consequences of the impact, whether the Dallas would not crash our trade balance and stuff like that. I think uh, given the circumstances of the entry into office the, uh, of this government and the uh, macroeconomic realities, both within the country and outside the country, endogenous and exogenous factors, a, 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 a mix of all of that and being objective, uh, I think the government is doing fairly well. But they should not rest on their laurels. Uh, people are being alarmed by the fiscal numbers coming out. Uh, expenditure, it's a bit uh, on the high side, and I think people are abusing. And when we say these things, we blame the government, the politicians. Some of us public servants are even more guilty of whatever the outcomes are than the, the politicians out there, because some of them don't even know the impact of what's happening. There's a lot of expenditure in government, uh, and uh, I'm afraid this year we might have another fiscal imbalance. 
Let's talk about the 11 million dollars, uh, the anonymous thing that mm -hmm. just happened mm -hmm. recently, and the 33 million that was transferred to the first lady's account. Mm -hmm. Something they said it's transferred from an anonymous account to. What's mm -hmm. your opinion on that? Okay, starting with the 11 million, President Barrow decided to give 11 million to the pilgrims. If he has the money, I don't see a problem. Who is the it. donor? He said anonymous. Yeah, I Does that make you question the transparency of this government? Uh, obviously, uh, a government who keeps telling us uh, their donors are anonymous is not transparent. But I, I think what happened with the 11 million thing, I think they, they got it wrong from the beginning how they communicated this whole thing. Uh, I think they did a poor job of communicating. I think uh, the government, uh, President Barros, should try and give us a, a better explanation that we can understand and accept. What, what's your opinion on foreign aid? Because we've been signing a lot of um, that lately. Yeah. What's your opinion on that it from an economist point from of view? empirical evidence collected and mm -hmm. analyzed by no less an authority than William Easterly, an Ivy League professor who was at one time World Bank. Foreign aid has never developed any country. It will never develop any country. Fine, we are in a critical situation. I know about budget deficits and everything. A little bit of aid would not help. But the current ethos thinking that these two will come and rain money on us here that will develop us, it will never happen. And I can say for sure, without a doubt, the plague they made, is it 1.4? Yes, something that, 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 that yeah, money something like will that. never come here. You will never ever receive 1.4 billion. What makes the you think frame. that? I, I know these two babs. A lot of these pledges have so many strings underneath them, so many conditions that they are setting you up, they, they want you to fulfill these conditions before these monies will come, but it, at some level they are even setting you up to fail it so that they can have a justification to hold on to this money. But you know, Yakar guy, do them. Let's try to build our own country with our own blood and sweat. Do you fear that Gambia might become an M society? The rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer, and the middle class diminishing? Uh, yeah, that's, that's very likely, that's very likely. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's not good, but the, gun sh the government should be conscious of this. Because I think we we having the uh, reemergence of a bourgeoisie elite type that almost uh, was largely controlled in the former regime. So the government should be very conscious of, of those dynamics. It, it, it's it's possible, but it depends on uh, which policy direction government takes. Gambians usually say, um, from dictatorship to democracy. Mm -hmm. Do you believe we have transitioned? We are in a transition. I think we, the intention is very clear that we want to go into democracy, even though recent statements from the powers that be have made a people a little bit jittery as to whether these people would not uh, uh, take from the play playbook of JAMI. I think we are uh, on a steady progress to a more, because I believe JAMI's government was a democracy, we are making progress towards a more democratic space but you know uh, that wasn't a democracy it, uh, 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 where were you when we were voting where were you where, where were you when where we were, were you voting when some of those things we, that we were, were voting are being and right you now. are saying it looks like you were living another planet we had elections that brought Barrow into power that's democracy what i'm okay. saying is that's we are one moving part of democracy yeah sure Good. it's not complete anywhere even in the u.s where sometimes you win the public uh, you public vote and then they have to defeat you in a so-called electoral college it's not perfect in England where they have one person ruling them for decades before you and I were done and still the leader of that country and not only that country but the commonwealth where you and I belong. It's that democracy. Democracy is not perfect anywhere. We had a democratic dispensation with a uh, lot of dictatorial uh, 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 aspects. We are moving towards a more democratic space. I am saying there is hope that it will go on but there are written, recent statements by the powers that we have made people a little bit jittery. Let's talk about the statement between him and Dr. Sisse. Do, do you think the response was presidential? <laughs> I'm afraid of the word presidential. <laughs> okay. What do you think of the entire debacle? Look, I, I think it's uh, very unfortunate, really, because I know that uh, Dr. Ismail Sisse is a very brilliant, patriotic Gambian who wishes well for this government and this country. And I'm repeating this government. Dr. Sisse doesn't hate this government. I know him. I think uh, President Barrow overreacted. Uh, I don't think he should have uh, responded by actually calling doctor's name. I think it was an error. And even if you look at the president's body language in that, in that video, you know he lost his school and it's pretty human. You know, I do get into those kind of situations myself sometimes. I, I can get heated in an argument and say certain things that later people will tell me, okay, somebody, maybe you should not have said this. Maybe you should not have uh, reacted this way and I accept it. 
I think uh, His Excellency the President uh, made an error there. Uh, I'm hoping it would not happen again because people, uh, there was a lot of interpretation of Barrow's words, his body language, you know, his tone, you know, and I don't think it actually reflects the President Barrow we know. But my point here is there are, if there are people that are giving President Barrow wrong advice, if there are people who are telling President Barrow, so I think uh, the president would do himself and the whole country a lot of good if he just becomes himself. And Are uh, you still friends with Jame? Have we ever been friends? As in professional it's a simple relationship? Question. Which professional it is? He was my boss. I was his junior. What are you talking about? Do you think he will ever come back to be president? I should ask you. You are in the media. You know more than me. Yeah, so what's you your opinion? You work for him. What's your opinion? I no, didn't work I am for him. On I, side. I didn't work for him. I worked with him to develop this country. What do you think? Is Jame coming? You think it's possible? No, I am not on that side of the microphone. Okay. Now let's talk about um, the education system yes. in the Gambia. Yes. We've seen the, the recent um, WAS results. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? on that it's a terrible indictment on the whole country and uh, i don't think we are taking it seriously enough at least the government is not taking it seriously enough you know i always say this and i gladly and proudly repeat it the yeah, IGM's biggest achievement is education especially the democratization of education in the gambia and i am living testimony i am of the efficacy of the IGM's investment in education and many other brilliant young people who are serving in this country, important positions, serving in international organizations like the IMF, World Bank, Islamic Development Bank, teaching in universities around the world. Yaya Jame invested in education and he paid off well. But even Yaya Jame himself, before he left power, at a rally that I remember I watched on TV in Farafenye, he challenged the education minister that our education system is failing. So this was out there. Even Jame himself, and you know Jame, he doesn't like criticism, talk less of him criticizing himself. Jame himself admitted the challenges in our education system. But when this government came, what did they do? They just elevated somebody from that very architecture to become minister. And that person has not made any pronouncement of a change in policy or direction in education. So that means the system that was inherited is being pushed forward. And this WASC result is just one result. The results have been bad all along. And I was informed of this, actually, when I left office, that what the education department used to do was to buy advertisement page in a newspaper cutter page and to squeeze in all the results of all these thousands of young people who took this exam because they don't want the truth to be seen. So this is what emerged. Of course, the democratic space, as I said, is getting opener now, and people started talking about this. And I think President Barrow was questioned about the results during his recent uh, rendezvous with the, with the media. And the education department... Government authorities are trying to make this look by saying that this, years, this year's results were better than last year's results. I think this is a joke, Lori Fifoyantula. The results are bad, they're bad. If you are comparing bad to bad, you are just bad. You understand? So I think what we should do is to accept that things are not working. And to be fair to this government, you cannot blame them for these results because this has been cooking. Started during Jamaica's time. Coming. It's, it's just a manifestation of what has been going on. So what I ex expect from this government especially His Excellency President Adam Abaro, and I'm talking to him directly because this is one of the most critical elements in, in, in the Gambia. President Barrow should not allow himself to be misled or to allow people to push him to try to defend the indefensible. It's bad, it's bad. Yes, President Barrow, it's not your fault. It's inherited. Let's try to fix it better late than never. You know, because education is the quintessential resource for the building of any nation. How about the healthcare system? Healthcare, healthcare has been become worse under this government, and it's very unfortunate because I've been to the hospital this Ramadan. My, my mother's sister was sick. She almost died. I had to stay in the hospital myself, uh, pick the blood sample, take it to the lab, get it tested, come back, go to the, go to the pharmacy to buy basic drugs like Prastamol. You know, this is very unfortunate. When I was Secretary General Minister of Presidential Affairs, I have witness, and Dr. Samate is my witness. Omar C. is my witness. Bala Gaba Yahumba is my witness. I used to visit the entire RBTH every weekend just to make sure that things were working and we turned the situation around. That was the time we renovated the Accident and Emergency Unit. Brought in doctor supplies. And I didn't ask for a single boot from anybody, from any donor. The monies are budgeted for. Let the health ministry 
take the money's budgeted for drugs and buy them. Let there be some kind of strong leadership to show people that you either work or get fired. Because that's the only language that people understand. People respond to incentives. What's happening at, at the hospitals? RBTH has gotten worse. I can tell you that comfortably anywhere. And it's inexcusable because the same resources that were there during Jamesh time are the same resources that are there now. Let's get up and develop our country. We are not doing this for Adam Abaro or Dr. Aisa Tuture. It is our responsibility as doctors, nurses, as administrators. And I'm not blaming the doctors alone because I know they have their constraints. Because from my experience, from budget right through the position of Secretary General, I know that sometimes the resources under the ministry and under the hospital board, they are kept there. And sometimes these resources are used for traveling and other expenses whilst people are dying for lack of paracetamol and penicillin and basic basic uh, 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 hygiene tools. At this Something time. that's been ongoing it's very for unfortunate. a very long time. It's very unfortunate. I want to emphasize it's happening now. I said it's worse now during Jamia, and I stand by that. But I'm not saying it's for Adam Abaro to get out of State House and go and do that. We are Gambians. The nurses are Gambians. The cleaners are Gambians. The doctors are Gambians. The hospital administrators are Gambians. For Allah's sake, for the sake of those people dying unjustly at these hospitals, let us get up and work together and forget about all these personal differences. And I know there was an impasse uh, between the doctors and nurses and the hospital administrators and the ministry. Please, for God and Allah's sake, let's not politicize our hospital. Let's get up and walk and use the little resources we have. There's no excuse for a lack of blood bags, man. There's no excuse for lack of parastamol. There's no excuse for allowing that hospital to be dirty and stinking and for roaches to be running on, on top of our patients. There's no excuse for it. No excuse, whatever. And we cannot sit down and, as I said, blame Adam Abaro for that. Let's get up and, and, and walk for our country. Do you ever see yourself working for this regime? Are you calling them regime? Government. I don't think they will like that. Do you ever see yourself working for this government? <laughs> if that makes it any better. <laughs> anyway, I am a Gambian, Mamudu Sabali, born, raised. My education was paid for by, this, by the Gambian taxpayers. Whether it's Adam Abaro's government or any other government, any government that needs my services to work, and I feel that where they're calling me, I can actually contribute. If they call me right now, I'll go straight to the office and start work, inshallah. Interesting. You, you are one of the witnesses at the ongoing Jane Commission. Yes. What's your opinion on that commission? I don't want to tell you my opinion because, you know, this is a presidential commission established by law. And I'm a witness there still. So out of respect for the judicial process, I don't want to pronounce my opinion now. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, Hamdala Mama Jahal, Mr. Sabali. I'm just going to go to the Adam Abaro question and ask you where were you because some of the things you have to happen right now. Mm -hmm. like 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 I was there trying to fix it. I was there as budget director when at one point officials from the Ministry of Health came and they wanted us to, you know, we used to have a subvention for the RVTH hospital and they wanted us to take from those funds. It's called viament in budget to move fronts from one budget line to another. They asked us to via fronts from RVTH to their travel budget, and we said no over a dead body. The monies are for the hospital. I was doing that. I was there trying to get scholarships for young people. Doctors, on one of my those uh, rounds at the hospital, I came in. Dr. Jaita is a witness. Uh, Dr. Samate is a witness. They had uh, uh, doctors who just did their general practice, needed a scholarship to go to Ghana to specialize. I walked into a IMS office and told him I needed money to fund, fund those people and they were sent to study. And tons of other instances. I cannot narrate all of it here. We were here doing the right thing by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right now? Yes. Lipulu happen. Then they will gain a singawa. But during the first region, so many things. I'm not going to happen. Then they will gain a singawa. But before, I'm going to go to the next region. They work under that government. So do you think at least this government is doing better as far as that is concerned? Freedom of speech. Well, I, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, at, at the times when I was in government, I didn't need to go out because I had direct access to him. So the democracy that uh, the new government is taking credit for, and sometimes some officials of this government, they talk about it as if this is uh, bread and butter they're giving us free. Everybody fought for this. It's our common heritage, the common good. Do you think democracy is good for Gambia? Some people think <sighs> it's not. Well, yo, I'm gonna that. <laughs> Whether democracy yeah. is good for Gambia. Some people question. Um, Some people to, say to, it's not. To be honest, uh, I think democracy, 
uh, has been billed by many people as the best of the systems that be, that's been tried so far. But uh, I think we need democracy, but we cannot and should never fully swallow hook, line, and sinker Western liberal democracy. What do we I think we need some, some adjustments in the parameters so that we can implement a kind of democracy that's in consonance with our culture. And I think the leadership, sometimes, you know, Ulmadi and Nahari, we talk about democracy as if it is religion. Well, sometimes, boy, we, in fact, when you take democracy and Islam, you take democracy. And this is a system that was devised by human beings. It has its flaws. So the leadership needs to know that democracy is not perfect. And sometimes the leadership themselves, when they speak of democracy, it's like it's from God. You know, when the criticisms come, and they, that's where they become uncomfortable and start, you know, saying people are abusing. But it's not a perfect system. And we must never, ever look at it as a perfect system. Let's... Uh, you know, you know, governance itself is, is, a, is, a, is an experiment in progress. Let's talk about your time in prison. Yeah, what do you want to know about that? What was that experience like? Fantastic, alhamdulillah. I had a great time in prison, man. This is the first time I'm hearing someone say they have yeah, had sure. a fantastic time in yeah, prison. Yeah, this is the first time you're meeting Umaru Sabali. Welcome to my world. Interesting. Yeah, it was fantastic, man. I, I started off at the NIA where I spent about five months, you know. You know, they handcuffed me, put me in the cell and, you know. But... Um, I'm a motivational speaker and author. You know, I've written books, I've read books. It's like I've been preparing myself for life. And all the books I've been reading, the Quran, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the, uh, there's this book by this uh, philosopher called Boethius, The Consolation of Philosophy. People who've lived this kind of life, you know, Viktor Frankl, uh, In Search of Meaning. You know, books I've read, that uh, situations like that. But I never thought I would live in that kind of situation. So when it happened, by the grace of Allah, I was equipped, prepared. Anytime in my, I'm in jail, my wife, the first thing she brings is brings me my copy of the Quran. When I have the Quran, even in hell, I'm happy, man. <laughs> you know, so, but I, at NIA, you know, I, I became like of an unpaid counselor, detainees were coming, I was keeping them calm. When I went to mile two, that was even more fun, man, at remand. You know, I met all these young boys there who were there for these minor offenses. The place was overcrowded, to be honest, you know. I 20 people knew Dugalla into a small room, take Buntabi, 5 p.m., Balanko, Ubi, 8, everything you have to do, eat and ease yourself all in that small environment. So physically, it was very tough, but mentally and spiritually, by the grace of Allah, I was on another level. So I was doing motivational talks for the young people there. I was preaching, giving sermons. I even created a small dara there by the grace of Allah, put up a, a blackboard. We are teaching each other Quran. You know, I really had a great time. It was a great uh, experience of uh, an awakening, if you like. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. You've been behind those walls, and you just mentioned like mm -hmm. what the situation is in yes, there. Yeah. Do you think we need prison reform? We need, and we are not doing anything about it, unfortunately. Uh, I went back to the prison about a year ago uh, on a philanthropic mission, and I met some of my jail mates there, and they're telling me the situation has not changed. I think they've gotten them a fan, but apart from that, there has not been any significant change in the prison, and I think the authorities definitely, if they, uh, if they really mean what they're saying about democracy and human rights, uh, the prison should be given priority. What do you think is the way forward for the Gambia? Huh, good question. The way forward is, uh, is for us to, to stick to, to our national pledge. As uh, very, very inspiringly wrought in our national anthem. It is a country for the Gambia, our homeland. We strive and walk and pray. And I'm emphasizing pray because we are a religious people, Muslims and Christians. All these secular fundamentalists who want to impose secularity on us, we should push them away. We are not saying we are declaring an Islamic state or Christian state, but we are a people of God from God. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It's not only supposed to be said when people die. It's a statement of fact that we come from Allah and unto Allah we, we return. So religion and our authentic culture should be our cardinal principles. We should learn to be authentic. I know the Tubabs are dangling all these aid baits to us. But we should be careful how we run our country, especially now that we are crafting a new constitution, uh, going through transitional justice. Let us create just platforms and make sure there is justice for everybody. This is very important. If we get that wrong, we, 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 we will be messed up. And I know some people are still angry. Some people are still uh, motivated more by revenge than justice. And we should be careful. We are at a critical juncture. Uh, I know we're having a lot of mistakes in the new government. And uh, part of it, I think, is insincere advice that people are giving President Barrow. 
people who belong to Kabudus, people who are angry and want to revenge, people who want to game the system, people who feel that now that Yaya Jame is out of the zone, you know, the cat is away, the mouse should play, they should eat all the, all, all the, all the grains. Uh, we, we should be careful about these things. Uh, the world itself is becoming a very complex, complicated, very difficult field to survive. A small country like the Gambia, with little resources, with such a, a bourgeoning youthful population, we need, we need to be very careful, and especially to cater for the young people, to cater for the young people, and not just to, to, to rely on these projects like YEP, which are not even solving, they are not even scratching the surface of the problems of these young people. I think the government needs to open up, especially President Adabawaro, speak more to the youths, engage them, not just in official forums, know their problems. We have a budget. It's not enough. It's never enough anywhere, but let's cater uh, for, for our young people from that budget. Let's not just uh, wait, wait on these uh, two bobs to, to bring this aid. So let's reform our education. It, it's very important. It's very important we have uh, a, a correct, effective, relevant education that builds up people, not just to be able to have money and eat, but to be able to intelligently live in a very complex world. And, and let's guard our peace and security. And I know sometimes politics can be funny. We can all get emotional about things uh, and do or say things because you think Adam Abaro is president, you want to hurt him. The country belongs to all of us. It doesn't belong to Adam Abaro. Just like Yaya Jame has just realized the country does not belong to him. It belongs to all of us. Let's, let's uh, uh, guard and protect this little gem of a country called the Gambia, a very beautiful country. I've, I've traveled all over the world. Interesting conversation with the Gambian pen right there, Momodo Sabali. And I want to say thank you for coming on this platform today. Well, this now brings us to the end of this edition of The Viewpoint. Do join us next week for another exciting episode. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.